So it's approximately 5 uh, a.m. in the morning. I usually wake up around 5 uh, or 5.30 or so, depending on how many surgeries and what time I need to be there to uh, see patients. Um, today, or in orthopedic oncology, we, I have clinic, which means I go and see patients um, in the office. And these are cancer patients who have cancer of their bone or their soft tissue. And then I have two surgeries today where a lady has a, a, a cancer in her shoulder. We're going to take a biopsy of it, which means we take a piece of her bone and send it to the lab, and they'll tell us what type of cancer it is. And depending on the type of cancer, that dictates what we will do for it. The next case we have is a lady with a lipoma in her, her forearm, which means it's a uh, benign, which is not cancerous, tumor of uh, fat cells. So we're going to remove that. And after surgery, I'll go back to clinic for a couple hours. And then this evening, I have a interview with a radio station out in Atlanta, 98.9. And then I have an event with my colleagues this evening where we have a dinner event where we will discuss uh, some uh, questions and different um, things that will come up on our tests. We have, Each year in November, we have a it's called an OITE exam, O-I-T-E, orthopedic and training um, examination. Um, it's an eight-hour exam, which we have to study for throughout the year, and it's coming up, so we prepare for that. And we meet once a week at different restaurants and different locations to uh, basically practice, do practice questions, and go over the exam. And so it's around five or so now, and I'll be back home around eight this evening. So it's a long day, but uh, lots of fun. Stay tuned. So usually in the morning when I first get to the hospital, I have patients that are in the hospital who we did surgery on or they're here in the hospital until they are better to go home. The first thing I do when I get to the hospital is I go see those patients and make sure they're okay, make sure their pain's okay, look at their labs, see if there's any images like a chest x-ray or a CAT scan that needs to be ordered. And if they're doing well, they're mobilizing, which means they're up and walking with physical therapy without any pain. They're tolerating the diet, which means they can hold food and drink. Um, and then all their labs are fine. They're able to go home. Uh, this morning, I have two patients in the hospital, so not too busy that I had to go see. And hopefully, I'll be able to send one home tomorrow and then one home after the weekend. So um, that's kind of my morning routine when I get to the hospital. So it is approximately 7.30 in the morning. Uh, I just got to clinic. I uh, saw my patients in the hospital and in the clinic. And uh, we have about 45 patients that we'll see throughout the day today. Anywhere from new patients, which means they're first time coming to see the, uh, the cancer doctor of the bone, who's called an orthopedic oncologist. And uh, follow-up patients, which means patients we operated on in surgery already, or patients that we're treating without surgery and we're just following them up in clinic. Orthopedic oncologists, they go through five years of surgery training orthopedic surgery training and then additional one to two years of orthopedic oncology training where they do um, uh, specialized training and cancer of the bone and soft tissue. Lots of cool procedures. Uh, Great to see you get very busy. I try to go to the gym at least three times a week but sometimes that's pretty hard so take the stairs whenever I can and I get to the top I'm out of breath so 
this is one of the uh, clinic rooms here. We use an orthopedic surgery. We got some models here. Supplies that we need. And have them sit here. This is the room we see patients in. So, just leaving the uh, hospital. Uh, interview the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, 98.9 FM out in Atlanta. Uh, so, I'm about to go get prepared for this interview here in a second. So, I've just finished clinic for the day uh, where we saw lots of different patients today. We saw patients with a new diagnosis of cancer, we saw patients who have cancer and had surgery for their cancer already. Uh, we saw patients that we um, have not operated on and just kind of following patients that do not necessarily need uh, surgery. Um, it's about 5.45 and I, had a, I have an interview here with um, a radio station out in Atlanta um, as an author and a motivational speaker. I get lots of requests to uh, do interviews and do motivational talks to visit locations. I just came from Tampa, Florida. Well, uh, I'll put a short video uh, like right up here about uh, my time there and um, where I did a book signing and speaking event. But let me call into the radio station here and um, she may make me take it off speakerphone. I don't know. We'll see. She told me not to do speakerphone, but I'm going to try to um, let you guys tune in on some of it. Here we go. We'll see if she lets me stay on speakerphone. Hello. Hi, this is Dr. Webb. Hey, Dr. Webb. How are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I am awesome. Thank you so much, sir, for coming on tonight. No problem. And if we are ready, uh, give us just a few moments. Can you say something so I can make sure I got you? You sound pretty good and clear. Uh, testing? Yeah, yeah, you sound good. Okay. Uh -huh. Just a few seconds and we'll be live, okay? Sure. Thank you. Alright guys, greetings and welcome to Motivating and Inspiring the Next Generation X through True Life Experiences. Tonight, we welcome the life and motivation of author, motivational speaker, and orthopedic resident surgeon, Dr. Antonio J. Webb. Dr. Webb also served in the military. He was in Iraq while he was in the, the U.S. Air Force. He's now written a book about overcoming the odds. Let's bring him on. Dr. Webb, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, too. I look forward to it. Awesome, awesome. Let's get started. So, Angelina, share with us how you overcame the odds in life. Um, it, it all started in Shreveport, Louisiana, where I where I grew up. I grew up... Um, <clears throat> I, I, grew up in Shreveport, Louisiana, and during that time, it was ranked actually the uh, eighth most dangerous city in the uh, U.S., and it was said that one in four black males would go to prison at some time in their lifetime. Um, lots of my f my uh, friends and family kind of fell victim to that. My little brother was sentenced to a, a juvenile life sentence uh, for armed robbery. My sister did a uh, time in prison, um, and ever since I was young, my mom has been in and out of jail and on and off drugs kind of my whole life. So, I, you know, I thought that was kind of the norm when I was uh, growing up, and um, it wasn't until I was introduced into a medical magnet program in Shreveport that I actually kind of took an alternate path and kind of stayed out of the streets and off the books, and uh, in the books. And now, you are also a motivational speaker, and you continue to give back by working with underprivileged youths yes, across America. Tell us more about some of those experiences. Oh, it's been great. You know, ever since I put out the book, I get requests from, um, I have people that email me from Ghana, from uh, Australia, from China, from Japan, uh, Japan, from all over the world. And it's just uh, amazing how my story has kind of inspired people and um, let them know that, you know, anything is possible, you know, as long as you work hard and keep God first. But I get invites, invites from all over the U.S. I recently came from Tampa, Florida, where I gave a... Um, a motivational talk out there and a book signing, but um, it, it just varies by kind of what my schedule will allow, but I get requests like all the time to go speak. Now, and you also 
had a challenge in becoming a doctor. Share with us that experience. Yes, ma'am. Um, when I got out the military, I did eight years in the military. I went in when I was 17 in the Air Force, and I went to Iraq in 2005, and then I got out in 2009. Um, and then I wanted to continue my goal of becoming a doctor, so I um, kind of finished my degree and my requirements for medical school, and I thought that my real-world experience and everything that I had been through and come from this really challenging, you know, background would kind of give me some weight in the application process, but I was in for a read awakening because when I applied to medical school, I got rejection letter after rejection letter after rejection letter. I was rejected from every single school that I applied to. So that was probably one of the lowest points in my life, um, and I um, and I had to get back to the drawing board, and I had to work harder, I had to uh, study a lot longer, I had to hire tutors, and did whatever I could to, you know, make myself a more competitive applicant. And I did that, and I applied again, and the same thing happened. I got rejected, rejection letter after rejection letter after rejection letter, and um, I just never gave up, and I wanted to be a doctor that bad, and I said, told myself that if it would have took me seven or eight years or nine times of applying, I would have did it, because that's how bad I wanted it, and I think if you want something that bad, uh, you'll eventually get it if you keep working hard and keep your head up and keep moving forward, so. All right, I've just finished my interview. I hope you guys were able to catch a little bit about um, some of this segment from the interview right now. There is a, a work event, and usually in the evening times, we about once or twice a week we have an event where we meet and we either have lectures or we discuss, um, uh, pre prepare for certain events like a big exam that's coming up. So we have an event at a restaurant called Alamo Cafe. I'm going um, to head there here shortly, and then after that I'll go home and study. Um, so I'll get home around 8 or so and study to around 10. And then tomorrow, uh, we have our lectures, which means a lot of people don't understand that you still have lectures in residency, and we still, like, go to class. We have professors who teach us. So uh, tomorrow we have lecture from 8 to 12, and then after that, we go to the cadaver lab, and we'll do uh, practice hip replacements and knee replacements. Um, so that's, that's tomorrow. And then I have a football game. As a resident, we're able to um, um, work at high school football games and be the physician for... Uh, certain teams around the city so that's what I'll be doing tomorrow and tomorrow evening so we'll see you shortly so walking up to the event about to walk in here shortly All right, it is 8.42, just got home. Um, that concludes the uh, day, uh, pretty long day today. Clinic, did two cases in surgery, radio interview, and then a event uh, for work this evening. Now I'm about to uh, study for one to two hours. Uh, I'll probably go to bed around 10.30, 11, and then get up at 5, 5.30 in the morning. Do it all over again. Thank you guys for watching. Um, and I will try to make a video for orthopedic pediatrics, which is my next rotation. In residency, we do uh, two-month rotations for different specialties. Uh, we work with foot and ankle surgeons in our foot and ankle rotation for two months. Sports medicine. Uh, we work with a lot of um, physicians who work with NFL teams, NBA teams, high school football teams, college teams. Our spine rotation, we spent too much on spine rotation, uh, trauma surgery. So there's different rotations while you're in, ro in residency and you spend time within these different particular fields. Right now, I'm currently on orthopedic oncology, which means I spend two months learning how to take care of cancer um, in the bone and soft tissue. So. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.